Right, welcome back everyone. So um, we're on week five of the summer, but technically week one of CIS 126. Uh, so it'll look a lot similar to what we've been doing before, but technically officially it's another class. And um, the, the um, modules and such of animate or of our 126 class will basically follow the syllabus that I gave back on part one four weeks ago. So I'm counting this as week five, even though it's technically week one of part two. Now, 99% of you are continuing from last week to this week, 125 to 126, because you're interested in getting the certificate. You need both classes. So I had sent out emails about all of that months ago or weeks ago before the summer even started to enroll in both and most people will or have. There's a couple people that might start 126 that weren't in 125. You'll have to do a little bit of catch up and so forth and talk to me about that when we have a break, but we're just gonna continue what we started to learn in 125. And so we're on week five, I'm just gonna count it sequentially, week five of the class. So the usual welcome stuff is all there. Uh, so to briefly preview it as people come in, um, we've got the uh, several objectives that we're going to work on this week and next week and so forth, because then we've got the big assignment coming up, the one we've been getting slowly to. Uh, ultimately, there's these two big assignments, the animation movie project and then the game project. So we've been learning the software, getting used to it, starting to touch a little bit on frame by frame animation last week. We're going to continue that this week and other types of animation as well. You can do a lot of types of animation with this animation software and also covering things like scenes and working with audio and the like. So big ideas there. Uh, there's uh, no assignment, but there is an extra credit. I guess I did write an extra credit. I just have to think about what to do for an extra credit. Angie, think of something and then we'll uh, maybe do some extra credit later on. Uh, so something extra credit related. So just think about it and we'll talk about it later. So the... Um, Material for the week, then in the resources, as usual. Got a bunch of different things here, readings, videos to supplement in addition to what I'll be showing here. So some videos, some of these are straight from Adobe themselves. Some of them are from some very cool YouTube channels. And so definitely check these out. Various lengths of time on these, nothing too, too long. The virtual camera is the longest one. Once you get, once you understand how that works, it's not too complicated. And we'll see how that works today. So we've got all of these things to look at. And also, as I said, at about one o'clock, we'll have a guest speaker and we'll um, segue into that when that time comes. So, um, okay, the first thing I want to do is we'll do a little bit of the frame by frame stuff. So last time we did a bouncing ball and we'll play with, uh, and the walk cycle too. So we'll play with a little bit of um, frame by frame animation uh, of the several types that we have to work with. I, I really recommend at some point, if you do watch this on your own, I'm going to use this as a guide. Uh, I'm not going to play it uh, minute by minute, but this one by Kita Morphers after the ad is a uh, pretty cool little tutorial on making this animation here. Let me play that here. All right, a little tanuki or something, jumping up to the next level. So this video, four minutes long, shows you how this particular animator did this. And it's by frame by frame animation. So we'll do a version of it. You can watch the video on your own with audio and everything. I'm just gonna go, they're gonna go through the whole process of building an environment. And the idea is that they're gonna jump from here to there. And it's not a lot of frames actually, and it continues to go on to or on with the concepts of um, principles of animation, squash and stretch, anticipation, all of that stuff. That was on a previous video. You can still access it um, on part one of the class. We'll do something like this. It's approximately four seconds of animation. I think they're running at 24 frames. And I'll just kind of skip through a little bit. So they're going to draw a very simple, you know, chunky, tanuki kind of character. And it's kind of cool to see that 
from the very basic shapes you can get an interesting little character, tail and everything, so forth. So they're talking about the various key poses. In our parlance, a key frame in Adobe Animate is what is known as a key pose in classic animation. So in classic animation, you have these big, splashy, well-drawn parts of a movement. And then there are the in-between parts. Because you see it went from five to six. Now this is a key pose, a key frame, not a regular frame. In between, there might've been 10 frames to get it from jumping off the ground to a little bit in the air, but they're, they're noting the key frames, the key poses. There's gonna be some amount of animation in between at the crest of the arc, then hitting the um, road or the uh, block and then kind of starting to stand up. And here's one of these little bits of that, um, the um, 12 principles of animation, squash and stretch and anticipation, follow through and the like, where in real life, you're not gonna see motion trails when you move around unless you're in fog, I guess. But in animation, we can add a little bit of motion trails like you see in the ears and in the face to give it that like a really backed up, jumped, sprung back up. And then the ears, and then everything kind of gets in, in static pose. So again, 10 frames, 10 drawings, 10 key poses. Play it, looks a little choppy, a little stiff maybe, but overall, animation. Now in between, they'll explain here how, then you add the in-betweens. In the main 10 poses, you might have two or three or five or whatever more drawings in between, then colors are added. It's a little animation of the little critter jumping. You add the whole background and you have a cool movie or part of a bit of a game. And this is just about four minutes, obviously very, very simplified. The hardest part is the actual drawing. And then in the beginning, well, what poses do I need? What um, key frames do I need? That's trickier, that comes with experience and so forth. But we'll kind of try to do our own version of this a little bit here together. So. In Animate, we're going to create a project file, project in HD 24 frames per second. So create new. Remember, there's a little shortcut there, but it doesn't let you set your frame rate. So I would go to create new on the left, select full HD and change that to 24 FPS. Create. And I like to press control two so that it zooms in a good view and change my background color to something besides white so we can see everything. And then I'll save this, save it into a project folder, create a brand new folder, week five, call it whatever you want. And we'll save this. I'll create a layer called background or name the layer background. Simple floor. Just using the line tool with a very simple floor and then some sort of platform over here. a floor and a platform to jump on to. If you see this little platform that I made here, I can fill it in with color and I want to fill in the floor as well with color. But if I drop in or try to drop in color, like this other platform, it obviously doesn't fill in because it's not a complete tape at the bottom. So 
don't hesitate to draw outside of the boundaries. Uh, stage area will be visible to people watching your movie or playing your game. Down here, so I can actually fill in the color. So whatever way you do that, make sure you have closed shapes to be able to fill in color. So I will just make some kind of big square out there, fill it with color. Lock that layer, make a new layer, character. Okay, so the video they set themselves up with, I believe about four seconds of timeline, which goes to, what number is that? A uh, hundred frames. So we'll do this in about a hundred frames or so. You have the timeline where all of your drawings and everything happens, and you'll obviously have to scroll over. But you also have this icon here to zoom in or zoom out of your frames, move it all the way to the left. It shows you more time, but smaller frames all the way to the right, uh, less frames and bigger view of it. I don't really know why you'd ever want to go this far into a zoom like that. And you can press the uh, reset just to go to the regular zoom. And depending on your monitor also, I'm, I got a different size monitor here. So mine only goes up to 65. Yours might go further than that. Um, so let's see. They did it at about 100 frames. It must be running at 30 frames per second. Because in my case, the four seconds is around 95 frames. Is that the same? there. So on both of these frames, select frame 100 on both layers. So just click and drag to select both. We have multiple ways to do this. Right click. Uh, actually, let's just do this on uh, the background. Just on the background, either right click insert frames, frame, or F5. Or we have also this icon here. If you click and hold, icon, auto keyframe, frame, blank keyframe, keyframe. If you're going to do something over and over, keyboard shortcuts are really nice, F5, F6, F7. You're going to use that over and over, which is the same as right click, selecting F5, F6, F7. Or if it's a little easier, a little convenient, there is the button right there. Maybe you're already there. You can press the button. Now, you have to select which of these do you want, and then it'll remember the last thing that you did. In this case, I just want a frame. Remember, a keyframe is whenever there's a change in the animation, what's on screen. We're not going to change the background. It's going to stay the same for 100 frames. So either F5 on frame 100, or if you use the little icon here, it'll remember the last one you did. Third frames. start to draw our little creature in any way you want, brush tool, line tool, etc. Pressure sensitivity or not. Fault is if you're using the brush, you get the pressure sensitivity. If you're using the pen tablet, um, and obviously that's cool. It's, often a little better for static imagery or imagery or characters and such that you're going to automatically animate with tweens and the like. But when you have the pressure sensitivity on an animation that you're doing frame by frame, often that is not quite recommended because there's gonna be like a little wiggle frame to frame to frame to frame as you draw those 12 or 24 frames. So. Let's, if you're using the tablet, I would recommend turn off the pressure sensitivity so you have a little bit more of a plain line throughout your character drawing. 
because yes, I like, I personally, I do like the pressure sensitivity, but again, when you're doing animation, you're going to see a little bit of a wobble. Maybe you want that. Maybe that's the style of your animation. But for the moment, let's try it without. Just kind of following along on, on the video example here. Again, this is right in Canvas. You can, ju you can jump back and forth on the video and what I'm doing. So it's sort of like a bean-ish shape ahead plus a body. Draw something like that. All of this can, of course, be edited later. Um, that. Keep your finger on the undo button if you don't love it so that you can just undo it quickly. You can even map these buttons. If you go to the settings uh, of the tablet, you can make one be control Z. Is one automatically set? Shift, control, alt, pan scroll. You can go to the settings and have like automatically this button right here is control Z. So you draw a little bit. Oops, mistake. Undo, draw, undo, undo. You can map these buttons here if you want. Start with drawing our basic character. So kind of a head and a body, something like that. Sure. And we'll just draw a fun little character. So got some eyes, snout, ears. Tail. And notice they are overlapping these lines. You probably want to draw just like that, but it's perfectly fine for you to overlap things a little bit because then you can just go in and clean it up. Right, exactly like the example, but I'll draw something. you're on the uh, character layer. You can easily lose track of what layers you're in. Some colors. I'm not going to get too fancy with a lot of the colorization just yet. The idea is more about getting used to the animation of things rather than uh, the detail. It's perfectly fine, and it's often done that you do stick figures um, to get the basics of the concepts and then the tails. Now, I'm not going to go into it so too too deeply to clean this up, but like, let's say this leg here, uh, obviously the leg overlaps the, the body. There's several ways to clean this up. I can go over with the eraser and then, you know, with the dirt erase it. However, think about it this way. After you draw a little bit, this is all with the brush tool and uh, I go with the selection tool. I started to show this a little bit last time when you overlap or previously when you overlap a shape on top of a shape, it kind of cuts away the color in an interesting way. It's hard to explain. But if I overlap that, for example, it kind of does the cleanup, you see, and the snap object might be useful or not. For example, if I go to a corner, I can manipulate that corner so that it kind of overlaps over there. This corner, overlap it over here somewhere. And then now that shape there. Can get rid of it. There's several ways to do this. Overlap there. And overlap there, paint bucket, fix that part. Let's see, over here. And I'm not showing this uh, to completely 
derail things on perfecting the drawing. I'm just showing that the um, malleability of this software, you can keep manipulating it over and over and over infinitely, basically. Let's try that as I'm showing it here. As you overlap these shapes, and then clean it up. And depending on your zoom level, it's it gives you sort of different results. Or zoomed in gives you more control. Zoomed out is kind of general. Not as precise. Again, I'm not going to make the perfect tanuki, something, something like that. The idea here again is the um, key poses in traditional animation, modern animation as well. You have the high paid people are known as the key artists. They're the ones that are in charge of, here's the 10 basic poses. Then the in-betweeners are the less paid ones that then draw the, the three in-between or the 10 or the two in-between. That's a job as well. In-betweeners, key pose artists, background artists, people specialize. I'm hired as the key poser because then your main drawing is going to be what is the basis of all the in-between drawings. So this is a little cuter than mine, but we get the idea there. So they're saying that's going to be the very first pose, the very first key pose. Okay, so then now we're going to lower down. This is the squash and stretch. When we did the ball, the ball was at the height. It was dropping down by gravity, and it kind of stretched out a little bit. So squash and stretch, and also the concept of anticipation. You're anticipating something. If it's standing and then suddenly jumps, that's incredibly mechanical. Maybe you have a robot that can do that. But with a, you know, a living creature sort of situation, we have to do a wind up. We have to get prepped to do an action. And I've said before, with animation, if you exaggerate to various degrees, it actually looks more realistic. So second keyframe, second key pose is we will redraw it or take the original drawing and manipulate it somehow to kind of get the crouch pose to ready to jump. So we have several ways we can do this next part here. Um, we can we can take what we've drawn now, copy that keyframe and manipulate it, if possible, to make it a crouch sort of pose, or we can draw it brand new. There are many ways to do the animation. And if I play it, they probably mentioned go to frame whatever, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I think we're going to do this sort of maybe every five frames or so. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to redraw a little, a little crouch pose. But I want to see where my previous pose was. So we have onion skinning. Turn on this onion skinning option. Range. I'm seeing where my previous pose was in my brand new pose frame 10. Right click, insert, blank keyframe, which is the same basically as F7, basically or the icon over here, the icon over here, uh, add a blank keyframe. I'll show you a little ghost image. Here's your previous drawing. So now let's draw a version of it where it's kind of crouching down based on the video here. Notice also the tail. The tail was kind of downwards on a standard pose. Then it flipped kind of upward. This is kind of like the ball where it was stretching out because of the force of gravity. So here, the force of the of the of the critter using its muscles to duck down, and the tail is kind of floppy. So the tail is a little slower to move than the body. So the tail is kind of upward. Little crouch pose. Let's see. So 
going to start kind of just with a with a sort of horizontal gouache shape. The legs popped out over here. Snout, ears, eye, tails a little higher. For the moment, just to practice more of the poses rather than the than the drawing, I'm just going to do outlines for the next few items. And so, standing up, oops, standing up, crouching down, I did a crouch, but then look, but then jump. So the idea here now is that it was down and then up. Oh, it's doing it backwards. It's, or it's kind of doing it in a couple of ways. Uh, kind of like maybe got scared and then stood up to look and now actually gonna jump. So let's try that. Um, so it went from little like that, more on its hind legs to look back. So third key frame, but I'm going at five frames at a time to leave space in between. I'm leaving space in between, you know, one, five, 10, 15, 20, so that in between, if I need to draw some more poses, I have a little bit of leeway in there. So I'll jump over to frame 10, F7, onion skinning. Gonna make it be like standing up, looking back. Pull your range back further to give you more of a view about where it where it previously was. Let's see, standing up. You kind of flip back and forth with the error with the period and the comma here. Flip flip around a little bit. Back looking up. Oh, there's a platform over here. So kind of the same pose but it's, more, it's just the sort of the face moving. So in this case, maybe instead of redrawing it, this is where I might, instead of an F7, I might F6 to copy the previous drawing and then just change it a little bit. So jump to frame 15. This time I'll do an F6. I have to then change this up a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna change the face. Uh, I'm kind of doing the, the ears in one direction, the faces in another direction. So when I was looking back, the face is looking back, but the ears are facing away. Now that it's looking forward, the face is looking forward and the ears are facing back. So I'll have to do a little change here. Relatively easy to change the face. On my case, I guess I do have to go in a little bit and here's draw them the set direction. Back, looking forward. I can, of course, change other aspects of the character. Keep it simple for the moment. 
So standing up, a little scared, looking back, looking forward. You get to save, control S. Crouch again. On this, I could redraw that or take my previous crouch drawing and use it as is or change it a little. You know, there's just so many ways to do this. I'm going to take my previous crouch drawing, kind of use it as is. The way I would do that is, okay, frame 20, I need a blank keyframe, F7. So that I can go back to frame 10 where I, or frame five, where I had the crouch. Right click, copy that frame. I blank frame 20, right click, paste. Paste and overwrite, uh, paste frame. Probably give me the same results. Probably paste and overwrite. Yeah. So I'm going to reuse that previous crouch frame. I could keep it as is. I can make some kind of changes. In the example, it looked like the second crouch was a little bit more compact, ready to jump, whereas the first crouch was maybe like a little scared pose. on frame 20, but so far I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got five keyframes. Again, the designation between those is very important to understand frames versus keyframes. In total, my project is 20 frames so far, but I've got five keyframes, five main poses. Got some space in between where I could further refine the movement. up. It went from that crouch. Now I've got some air. Here's the squash and stretch. The body's been expanded like that. The ears, uh, that's what's the name of that secondary action, I believe. Um, so we've got the ears also streamlined. The legs, the back legs are all stretched out. The front legs are flopping around and a little tail there. So something like that, some amount of air. Seven or frame 25 F7 onion skin somewhere. Here, relative to the platform, if where I've drawn it here, it's not too high, I drew it higher, it will give a really good sense of a really strong spring up. Here, it's maybe a medium or a lower force of jump, but from the key pose of very crouched to very jumped, that delineates or denotes very fast jump, very strong muscle, very quick character. Um, if it was higher than where I drew it, from where I drew it here, it's it was a nice jump, but maybe you know it's a little little chunky character, so it couldn't get as much hang time. Tails, the legs. Arms, ears, snout. We have the arc, it's getting there, just about to hit the platform. So making a little curve into there.
So if it's keyframe, then hitting the uh, platform. So one challenge for beginning animators is you you think too hard. You think in every single frame of the animation. No, you want to think more in the key poses, the big important parts of the animation. Standing, crouching, jumping, landing, everything in between, you'll get there. Even if you can animate very well just those main 10 key poses, it'll give you a very good um, give you a very good amount of um, realism to the animation. Even more frames, more smoother, uh, smooth, more realistic. So hitting the hitting the platform. This drawing to me is vaguely like the cap crouch drawing. So I could take that crouch drawing again, copy it to here, put it on top of the platform, or draw a new version of it, or copy the previous drawing and make a little change to it. So I think I'll probably do the copy of, a, of the crouch. Yeah, so on frame 35, F7, blank keyframe, go back to where I have that crouch. I click copy that frame. 35, okay. overwrite the frame, and then of course move it to where it needs to be. Maybe turn on onion skinning to see. Maybe it's, and even that, if you if you have your onion skinning on for some amount of frames, you see that um, movement happening, that curve. platform then kind of standing up that frame looks a lot like the previous frame where they were kind of looking behind themselves vaguely so i might take that previous drawing change it like add the speed lines of uh cut head back as i stand up or draw it again i'm going to try it that way i'm going to maybe take the previous kind of stand up like that frame 40 f7 this is to show you that, yeah, frame by frame animation, one of the few we will look at is a lot. It's a lot of effort, a lot of time, a lot of drawing, a lot of redrawing and TDM to various degrees, but there's a lot of shortcuts too. If you drew a particular, if you plan things out, like with storyboards and scripts and all of that, you might then find shortcuts here and there where the same pose the same drawing can be used different ways as is or with some alterations so here i'm taking a previous pose actually i'm going to do the yeah so there was a look back look forward i'm going to look i'm going to take the look forward copy that paste that and add the speed lines So we've got the speed line stand up, final 10th pose. Here's our little curved speed lines, and then a final no speed lines static pose, very similar to the previous one. The tail has gotten into final position, as well as the ears. The face is pretty much the same. 
So those are those secondary characteristics. I go to my next frame, F6 this time, so that I can just make some changes, like remove the speed lines, alter the ears a little bit. We did it in less frames, did it half the frames that the uh, video had. So that means that the, if we don't show that final frame long enough, it'll just kind of disappear. So just for the moment, um, all the way to the end there, uh, right click insert frame F5. So on the final drawing, the 10th drawing, just hold it for the final frames. It's a little long for the moment, but can refine that as we go on. Test it if you want, if you haven't done so yet. Control Enter. Obviously a little choppy, but look at that, you're animating. You are making the uh, character start at a certain point, then start to move. Now, the video didn't mention it, and this is something that everyone's gonna do as we go on through the various assignments. In our minds, we just spent this amount of time, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever. We spent some amount of time working on this. We've seen it over and over and over. We are working on it. When we play it, it starts to animate right away. There's no amount of, what am I looking at first before the animation? This is very common. You're all gonna do this when you start to work on your main projects. You're not gonna leave enough time at the beginning or at the end of the animation. Because if I didn't add, let me take it back here. If I didn't add this, these final frames here, okay, well, I've been working on this. It's good, jump, arc, curve, lands, ears, wiggle, we're done. Cool, we're done, let's play it. Well, final frame, then it disappears. Oops, then it starts over. We see that for one, one twenty-fourth of a second. But as I've been drawing it for minutes on end, it's in my mind that it exists. Obviously, it doesn't. Literally, it only exists for one, one twenty-fourth of a frame. So that's why I said, okay, frames all the way up to 100. That is also happening with the, uh, the beginning here. The, the first pose only lasts one, two, three, four, pose, four frames before then it change the, changes to the actual animation. I want a little bit of a time here so that when someone sees my project brand new, they see a little pause, the creature's there, then it looks around, then it jumps. So the opposite where I need now time at the beginning. So it will, I will add maybe up to one second of time for the first keyframe. This first keyframe only lasts up to five frames. I want this keyframe to last up to 24 frames. Pretty easy. Click on the first keyframe, press F5 a number of times until we get to the second keyframe at 25. Now there's one second of pause. The one frame is shown for 24 frames, one second, then the animation. Then at the end, pause for some amount of time, triumphantly on the platform. And because I added frames at the beginning, whoops, that pushed frames over at the end. So you can delete those extra frames at the end, select, I click remove frames or shift F5, 
F5 adds frames, shift F5 removes frames. Control enter. All right, so it's just about one o'clock, so I think Rich is going to come in very soon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the recorder for the moment. Um, we're going to wait for him to come in in just a moment, and then um, I'll ask him if we can record it. He'll probably be okay, but I'm going to turn off the recording for the moment. We'll do the guest, and then probably come back and do a little bit more work, where I will then record that. So maybe take a quick break if you want or refine this drawing fill in the colors and refine the drawings if you want as we wait for him to come in <laughs> 